apply for Erasmus Mundus and got rejections, why? You did all your best. You fill in the application, delivered all the materials needed, you even paid for the language test, which is not cheap. And after all of this, you're not accepted. That's frustrating. I understand. And therefore, I'm gonna talk about the most common reasons why you are not accepted for Erasmus Mendes. First of all, congratulations. Why congratulations? Congratulations because you dedicated your time, you dedicated your energy and you made this application and you sent it. Because not everyone, believe it or not, not everyone is so dedicated and not everyone believe in themselves to apply for the program. And if you have come so far, then you're definitely a good candidate for Erasmus Mundus program. But maybe this year it was not the best timing for you to become a part of Erasmus Mundus program. In today's video, I will explain some of the mistakes I have seen through other applications of other students I have read. When I launched my YouTube, I didn't expect it, but I have been receiving hundreds and hundreds of questions to review the applications, to read the motivation letters and to review some of the some of the portfolios and therefore I had the option to actually see some of the most common mistakes. So why? First of all, don't forget that you're competing against the entire world. Erasmus Mundus is a full rights scholarship so obviously everyone wants to get in, everyone wants to get the scholarship. So if you are not accepted this year, even though your academic records are amazing, your professional experience are very rich, even though your application was done very well and correctly, it might happen that you were not accepted just because there are so many talented people around the world. So this might be one of the most common things and reasons why you were not accepted. What does it mean? It means that if you are maybe applying next year, you will be accepted among the first candidates. It's just sometimes it's really random choice of many factors who is applying the countries of origin of the people applying. So really don't get discouraged if you made everything the best, if you made your best and still you're not accepted because there might be some factors which you just simply cannot control. The second most common mistake and struggle I've seen students have is headed paper and general uh, in general reference letter. Uh, I know you might be asking what is headed paper? Headed paper is basically paper released by institution or company which includes the address and some contact information as well as signature. I've seen some headed paper written in the hand. This is definitely not professional. This is not acceptable. So make sure that your reference letter, whether it's from the professor or your colleague or your boss, that it's delivered on headed paper. It not only gives the impression that it's professional, but in most of the consortiums is required. So actually any re requirements which is written, uh, you must obey, you must, you must do all the requirements which are in the program. If you don't do it, there is higher chance that you will not be accepted. Third thing, extremely important, I completely understand that in some continents and some countries the education approach is very different, the requirements might be higher, somewhere might be lower, but it's extremely important if you deliver such application that it's perfect. What I mean by perfect? No errors, no typos, no grammar mistakes. At general, the paper needs to have some structure, so paragraphs, not too long paragraphs, it all has to be kind of easy to read and not talking about the error mistakes again. This is just not uh, allowed at all. I know myself, I'm not a native speaker. My English is by far from perfect. I make many grammar mistakes. The professors will know about your not nativity. They will know that you are gonna make some grammar mistakes, but when you deliver such application, you need to make sure it's perfect. So how can you make your application perfect without any grammar mistakes? Firstly, read it several times. You can also print it out and read it on a paper, which really helps to, to see it, to see how the paper actually looks like. It will help you to notice some of the typos more. But don't forget to download or use some software which makes you the auto correction whenever it, it's in the word or in the internet. I personally use Grammarly, which helps me immensely, which helps me a lot. And then last but not least, definitely give it for some proofread. 
whenever it's your professor, if it's your friend, but I suggest some native speaker or someone who has excellent command of English. It's really, really important. If your professor doesn't have time or if you don't have any friends who have amazing command of English, don't hesitate to pay someone at the internet to make such corrections because this is just so, so crucial and it will definitely pay off in the future. There are so many mistakes I would not notice by myself, not even mistakes, but also some uh, context uh, unclarity, some unclear stuff. So definitely put a big emphasis on this. Obviously, one of the other reasons why you were not accepted might be the poor academic record. What I mean by that, some programs require some minimum grades, some minimum GPA, some of them don't. However, uh, it might be a mix of many factors, not only the academic records, but the lack of professional experience or lack of academic experience. You need to understand that if you're applying for such a program, Erasmus Mundus, studying in three different countries or more countries, you need to be really holistic. You need to have many experience in all different sections. You have to be a complex box of, of skills. And therefore, if you lack of something, what might the university seem as crucial, this might be one of the reasons why you were just not the best candidate this year to study at their program. When I've been reading some of your applications, I have noticed that we, as people, we tend to write too much. My motivation letter never exceeds two pages. Even two pages might be sometimes considered as too much. One page is actually just perfect, but I understand that sometimes we need to really clarify our profile, but never go for more than two pages. I know we all have a lot of experience because we are applying for masters, so we have experience from the bachelors and from previous years, and maybe some of you are guys working, but this is also one of the skills university appreciate, it's to pitching yourself, to showcasing and to be able to to highlight your best experience and therefore if you're just too wordy, you're explaining too much or you're explaining something what is already mentioned in your CV, uh, this I'm not saying this is the reason why you got a rejection, but this is one of the reasons why your applications didn't stand out. If you're writing five pages, I guarantee you that not every single word will be having such significance as if you just put one page or two pages. They are receiving like 300, 400, thousands of applications and this is your only way to stand out. Therefore, you need to make your motivational letter or your portfolio just outstanding. And being too wordy doesn't really help. It's on the contrary. Sometimes less is more, like in this case. We also tend to be too generic. And I believe that if you're too generic, you're too weak, you're, you are just like weak in expression in regard to your experience, this is just because you have so, you have written so much. Believe me, if you have one page or if you have two pages to describe all your experience, there is no space to be too generic. I give you an example. If you state in your motivational letter, I want to help my society in my country after I will come back from the program, this just doesn't say anything. Or if you say, I have many years experience in marketing, what does it say? Where did you work? What is your position? What did you achieve? You always need to deliver some measurable results. And this is something what is very important. We always say it in regard to CV, but also in regard to motivation letter, it's really helpful to just put one sentence with clear results rather than describing in one paragraph what were your duties and what did you do. It's much more valuable than if you just say I did a lot of this and this. Some measurable details, goals, projects, this is always gonna be more valuable. And last but not least, this might seem obvious but sometimes we tend to oversee some mistakes and this is deadline it can happen but all pro programs are released on the 1st of october and usually the deadline for a scholarship is between december january and february some might be different therefore it's very important 
to be always updated about the deadlines. I personally recommend setting your own deadline at least two weeks or one week before the real deadline. So if you discover some mistakes, you still have some time and you don't need to stress so much about correcting it. So if you're gonna apply late, then there is high chance that your application will not be accepted or you will not be granted the scholarship. Anyway, if you got rejected or if you didn't receive scholarship as you wanted to, you still have a right to make an appeal. Make an appeal, usually when you receive the email with a rejection, there is some email address where you can just make an appeal and stating that you would like that the consortium and that the partners, the university partners will double check your application and they might find that they did a mistake. There is still some little chance that they will consider your application and that at the end you will be accepted. Honestly, I think appeals don't make wonders, so don't expect a lot from the appeals, but it's still some chance to proceed further and you have basically nothing to lose just writing one single email. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I'm very curious what are the most common questions you have when I say Erasmus Mundus or studying abroad and see you in the next video guys. Bye bye!